Hi, my name is Doug Robertson. I'm a member of the Parish Council here at Our Lady of Victory Parish in Inuvik. And we'd like to uh, take you on a short virtual tour of the upstairs of the church. So we're uh, located behind the altar right now at uh, Our Lady of Victory Church. And uh, you can see uh, just before we go up the stairs, you can see the old Carillon system here that uh, uh, has been here really I, I can't tell you how many years. It's a, it's a fairly old set. It still works uh, partly back when the church was, uh, was first built in the late 1950s. The bells here would have rung a number of times a day for morning mass. It would have rung the Angelus at lunchtime and evening mass. Today we just ring it uh, about a half hour before uh, Sunday mass and mass on weekdays. You can see how narrow the staircase is going upstairs and that's one of the reasons that we have to restrict access. We're about to turn the first corner and head up to, uh, to the very top. The construction of the church is actually a dome within a dome. So what you see from the outside of the church is the exterior dome and from the inside you see the, the interior dome. So on our way up the stairs here at the first uh, bend in the staircase, we've got one of the most interesting uh, design features of the, of the church. Brother Larocque, who had uh, not a whole lot of education, he joined the Oblates uh, after completing the fifth grade, um, was not able to, uh, to make blueprints or to read blueprints. And uh, his design was in his head and he would sketch out his thoughts and his ideas on pieces of plywood. And we're really fortunate today to still have a few of those pieces of plywood which are attached to the wall here. So if you see, if you have a look at the, the detail of the arches, complete with his, uh, his measurements and his uh, design details that he's added. Uh, here you've got a, an image of the nine foot cross that's on the top of the church. And over here you've got more arch detail. And here is the, the detail of the, the actual roof of the church with the, the one inch boards on edge. So we're climbing the stairs now, we're almost at the top, but it, it's worthwhile to just take a minute to look to the left and the right and get an appreciation of how much lumber is, is involved in the building of this building. Uh, being built in the late 1950s, uh, it is entirely built of, uh, of wood. There's no steel in the building at all. And just an enormous quantity of, uh, of uh, milled lumber and plywood. Um, about five years ago uh, on a tour, a structural engineer kind of did a, a quick assessment of the, uh, of the uh, construction techniques and the materials. And he figured that uh, by today's standards, the church is probably about 50% overbuilt. If it was being built today, it would be done with a lot less lumber. What we see here is a stencil on a piece of plywood. Of course, all the material for the church came uh, up the river, uh, the Mackenzie River, and um, this material was, uh, was stenciled as to its destination. So this is a really neat historical record because it shows that uh, this particular pallet or load of wood was being delivered to East Three Aklavik. And of course, East Three is the first name uh, that Inuvik was known by before Inuvik was even thought of. Uh, East Three was the name of the site, uh, the name that was given by the federal surveyors when they uh, found this site. For those of you who uh, may be handy men or handy women or maybe in the construction trade, you'll recognize just looking at, uh, at the construction here that back in 1958 a 2x4 was actually 2x4 and uh, a 2x8 was actually 2 inches by 8 inches, not like the, uh, the dimensions that we see today. Okay, here we are at almost the top. 
Where we are right now is on the exact opposite side of the floral emblem that you saw in the ceiling uh, when you were downstairs. Um, remember that uh, Brother Larocq was uh, uh, a young man who joined the Oblates with a grade 5 education, had no construction training, no engineering or architectural training, and yet you look at uh, above us here the uh, the kind of design that he came up with to tie together the, the arches. He had an absolute knack for building things. Some of the things we like to uh, point out and talk about while we're up here are some of the construction details. One of the things we like to uh, show off is the use of plywood in the construction of the building. So if you look at the way plywood is used as, uh, as gussets to, uh, to add strength, uh, plywood here, plywood here, and even when you look at, at these beams here, you'll see where plywood is used in between the 2 by 6s to add strength to the, to the construction. I'm standing right now amid the, uh, the roof construction of the church. So you can see uh, from where I am uh, the, the roof above me. And if you, uh, if you have a look overhead, you'll notice that the roof is constructed of rows of one inch boards on edge. From, from top to bottom, there's a total of 337 rows of boards on edge. And it was done that way, the roof was constructed that way in order that the, the boards could be bent to the curvature of the roof. But you can imagine how time consuming that must have been as the, uh, as the builders were uh, tackling this part of the construction project. Uh, I can only imagine how many weeks and months it must have taken to complete those uh, 337 rows of boards to, uh, to construct uh, the entire roof. The Oblate Fathers and Brothers who were responsible for the construction of the church uh, were known for many things, uh, chiefly among them their uh, missionary zeal and their frugality as well. They were famous for not wasting uh, a scrap of material and using everything that they could possibly use. We have an example of that in the construction of the church here where uh, right above us, right over our heads, is a little walkway that leads uh, to the uh, ladder that accesses the cross. And you can see uh, in the walkway here there's a couple of broken hockey sticks that are used. This one here is a, a Louisville Slugger and it's got some young fellow's name uh, written on it that you can just uh, faintly read it. And uh, this one here, if you look at it, it's uh, stenciled uh, the Bill Gatsby Hockey School. So that kind of dates uh, when the construction took place. When you uh, pay attention to the construction details up here, you really notice some of the fine points and uh, some of the care that was taken in the construction. If you look right above us to the, uh, to the walkway, which uh, goes right around the, uh, the cupola up here, you notice that this, the 2x4 here has been notched out for each of the 2x2s to, to sit in. You know, if that was being done today, very likely the 2x2 two two would just be sat on top of the 2x4 and secured with a screw. But uh, what, we, what we see here is an example of the, of the attention to detail and the care that was taken in the construction of the church. Okay, we're climbing up to the next level, almost the last level. And this is the level where uh, you can actually see out some of the windows up here. Most of the windows are uh, colored and frosted, but there are four or five clear ones that allow you a really good view of uh, the delta over in this direction, down Mackenzie Road, which is our main street here, and out over the super school in that direction. There's only one level higher than this, and we don't actually go up there. And uh, that is the, uh, the hatch that you see right in the center which takes you up into the nine-foot cross, which is at the very top of the church. 
The reason that we have access to that is there's two light bulbs up there because there's a few glass panes in the cross and occasionally the light bulbs have to be changed. One of the other interesting construction details up here is the reflective ceiling right above my head here. You'll notice that uh, the ceiling is made of these uh, shiny metal panels. And the reason for that is uh, in the dark time of year here, from about the end of November till about the middle of January, when we're almost in total darkness here in Inuvik, we, uh, we light up the top. There's a, a ring of uh, light bulbs around the perimeter and uh, we light up the top here and the light of course reflected by the ceiling and the scene from outside through the colored windows is quite beautiful in the in the dead of winter thanks for being a part of our virtual tour today we're really pleased to be able to show off the uh, the uh, the magic that brother Larock and father adam were able to create when they got together uh, father adam had had the dream uh, he had the vision of a church that reflected the culture of the local people and Brother Larocque, of course, was the, was the builder who was charged with uh, making that dream a reality. So we're, uh, we're very pleased to have been able to, uh, to show it to you today. Thank you.